All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the changes in potential and kinetic energy in regards to heating and cooling curves. And so on the top, we have a typical uh, shape of what would look like a heating curve. So of course, we would have temperature over here. We would have energy down at the bottom. And I'm just going to use water as an example. And just give us a base point. This would be zero degrees Celsius. This would, of course, be 100 degrees Celsius. So we have our solid phase. We have our solid and our liquid phase. We have our liquid phase. We have our liquid and gas phase. And then finally, just our gas phase. And so what we have to remember is what's going on with particle motion. And so as objects get warmer, we think about the correlation of increased motion of those atoms and the particles that are within them. So if I have a block of ice, for example, whether it's you know minus 50 or all the way up to minus one, it's still going to be frozen and then it's going to start to melt at that point and the molecules start to move faster. And so if we actually break this chart up, I'm going to break this up into sections. And we have one, two, three, four, and then we have a fifth section over here. Three of those sections are showing increases and two of them are showing steadiness. And so if we think about this again as an idea of temperature over here, And if we look up the definition of temperature, it is the average kinetic energy of a substance or a group of uh, molecules or, or an amount of a material. If the temperature is going up, then of course kinetic energy is going up. So we have a Ke increase in this section here where we see the increase in the temperature on the, on the graph. Just like we have it in the liquid phase, we have a Ke increase. And then very end of the chart, Ke increase over there just as well. In the middle portions, there is no temperature change. Melting and freezing both occur at zero degrees, just depending on if the object is warming up or if it's cooling down. So if I am at minus 20, minus 10, minus five, finally minus one and zero, it starts to melt, and then it continues to melt. I might have a huge block of ice here in the beginning, and then over time, maybe I have a smaller block, a little bit and then I have nothing left and it's just all water and then so we have liquid in th through this next section of the graph. Same thing would happen, it would be all liquid and then it would boil down over time and I'd have all gas for that last part. So in this section right here, kinetic energy stays the same. Okay, there is no increase in kinetic energy, it just stays the same. What is changing though is the potential energy. There is a potential energy increase in those two sections. It's changing from, again, solid into liquid. It's starting to be able to move more and have more uh, action in there, just like liquid to gas. It's moving more, so the potential is increasing. Same thing with the potential energies. At that phase where kinetic energy is going up, potential energy is stagnant. It is staying the same. Potentic, uh, potential energy is the same. Potential energy is the same in those sections. Now. The opposite is true for a cooling curve. This would be the same exact temperatures, just going backwards. This could be 100 degrees Celsius. This could be our zero degrees point. If we break this down into different sections or divisions, we can determine what's going on with the kinetic energy and potential energy. Now, because this is a decrease, because the temperature is going down, kinetic energy goes down. Kinetic energy goes down here as well, just like it does over here at the very bottom. Now, just to throw in the values again, going backwards, this would be my gas, this would be my liquid, and this would be my solid phase. In between gas going into liquid, and then liquid going into solid. I might have just a little bit of liquid here, and then it starts to freeze a little bit more, a little bit more, and then over time we have the whole block of ice, and then finally it's all solid, because again, it's going to take some time for that whole thing to, to freeze to completion. But again, at this phase, there's no temperature change, so again, in this section of the chart, Ke is going to stay stagnant. Ke is going to stay stagnant in the gas and liquid phase. Just like we saw up above here, instead, potential energy is what's changing, and that is decreasing in these two sections. But in the gas, the liquid, and the solid phase, solid phase kinetic, excuse me, potential energy stays the same, potential energy stays the same, potential energy stays the same. Now, if you are watching this and you take a New York State Regents exam, 
one of the questions that always comes up is, you know, they, they ask of, uh, according to the chart, what sections are, you know, kinetic energy and potential energy increasing or decreasing, or is one going up and one staying steady? And they'll usually give, uh, le uh, excuse me, letters there. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to erase this top one here, just to give you an example of that. So you might see A, B, C, D, E, and F. And the question might say something to the regards, and you'll see this phrased multiple different ways. Okay, that's one of the key things with the Regents exam. They keep giving the same questions, they just rephrase how those questions are really uh, expressed, and maybe they'll change some of the answers. But the question could say something, you know, in which sections are uh, K, E, stagnant or is KE not increasing or is KE steady or it could say which sections is PE stagnant or steady now for the KE to be steady remember that's these sections right here okay where there's no change in temperature where there's no change in temperature that would be the flat sections so for the KE to be steady it could be BC or DE for the PE, or the potential energy, to be steady, that was these other sections here, where kinetic is changing, potential isn't. So that could be either AB, CD, or EF. And the same would be true down here. There's many different ways that they could phrase those questions. And again, those are something you want to be uh, very wary of. It's pretty consistent, and, and almost every year you see something very similar to that on the Regents exam. And maybe they'll just they'll give a multiple choice question, and it might say, okay, this is one of the other tricks you need to look for. It might say, okay, under which uh, condition or under which segments is PE increasing? And what they'll do, potential energy is increasing in these two, but what they'll do is they'll make it multiple choice. And so what we'll see is four options that one of them works and the other three don't. So a lot of times with the regions, you have to look at the three that are the opposite, and then you find the one that is going a different section, and that's usually the case. If you're, you know, if you're not really sure of your answer, that's usually the one. So if they wanted to know in, under which section is potential energy increasing, and let's say the multiple choice options were, you know, let's say we had, I'm gonna go over here for a second, we could have A, B, we could have B, C, we could have uh, C, D, and then E, F. And so if we look at each of those, AB, if we just look at the section, AB is increasing like this, BC is a flat section, CD is an increase, and EF is an increase. So the one that looks different is that BC there. And so, again, that's often what happens with the Regents exam, and not just for potential energy, uh, excuse me, uh, not just for um, heating and cooling curves, but it could be for multiple other things as well. A lot of times endothermic and exothermic questions are like that. They'll talk about, you know, what is endothermic and what's exothermic, you know, solid liquid to gas, gas to liquid to solid, and they'll throw in different areas and questions like that. And so just to remember, and uh, kind of going off that same thing as we wrap this video up, this right here, in order to do this, energy had to go in. So I had to put energy in to melt the ice and to also boil the water. So heating curves, Are endothermic. Okay, energy had to go in. Where cooling curves are exothermic. That gas had to lose heat to condense back down into water. The water had to lose heat in order to freeze. And so again, there you have a nice in-depth view of heating and cooling curves. Hopefully you found some benefit from this video and you get some success from this, or at least from this unit, and make sure you check out the other videos so you can learn more about chemistry, especially at the high school and general chemistry level. This has been Mr. Gardner. Take action, and I hope to see your success in the future with chemistry.